In this lesson, I want to explore public and private endpoints. For many services in Azure, and I'm going to take a storage account as an example, by default, for our interactions with this service, we have a public endpoint. That means it's an address that I can communicate to from the internet. It's internet routable. Now, obviously, I can also communicate it from services in a virtual network. They have that same internet connectivity. But the address itself is public. It's internet routable. I can get to it from really anywhere. Now, that doesn't mean anyone can talk to it. I still have to authenticate to nearly every type of service. This could be using Azure AD integration. It might be using some kind of shared access signature. It's going to vary depending on the exact service we're actually leveraging. Additionally, many services for this public endpoint have the idea of a service firewall. From that, I could say, well, only certain IP addresses are allowed to communicate to me. Maybe it's the gateway from my on-premises network. But additionally, if I think about, well, I have a virtual network, we have this broken up into various subnets. So let's say subnet one. One of the things I can also do is I can make this subnet a known entity to services through something called a service endpoint. And I can create service endpoints for different services, storage, SQL, whatever that may be. And then on the firewall, I can say, well, I'm going to allow in only traffic coming from subnet one. So now services in subnet one, but only in subnet one, could communicate to that public endpoint. But it's still a public endpoint, but I'm locking it down so I can only use it from things in that particular subnet. And we can see this. If we go and look at something like a storage account, but again, this is consistent across many types of service, what I can see here is I'm looking at the networking element of the security, and I could say, well, enabled from selected virtual networks and IP addresses. And I could then add particular ranges of IP addresses by just typing them in. Or I can say, well, I want to enable existing or add a new virtual network. If I say add an existing, well, I'll see all the virtual networks available to me. And then I could go ahead and pick a particular subnet, and it will show me I already went ahead and added the service endpoint, so it's a known subnet, to the firewall to allow communication. If it doesn't have a service endpoint, hey, it can go ahead in a single step, add it for me. So that's how I can lock down that idea of the public endpoint to a particular service. But what about if I don't want that? The other item we can add is something called a private endpoint. So with a private endpoint, it's an IP address within a subnet we specify. So just like a regular network interface card for a virtual machine, think of it as really a network interface is created and attached to our subnet. So now there's a private endpoint, let's say private endpoint one. Private endpoint one represents a connection directly to a specific instance of the service. Let's say it's storage account one. So it's only to that specific storage account. So then what I could do is, well, I can communicate to that private endpoint from things in the subnet, in the virtual network, from connected virtual networks. I could be a completely different VNet, VNet two, that has a peering connection. I could even be connected from on-premises network. And maybe I'm connected over a site-to-site -site VPN. Maybe I'm using Express Route private peering. But I have an IP path to that IP address that represents this specific instance of a service. And I can create private endpoints to storage, to databases, to many, even app services. Many types of services support this. 
There is a special DNS configuration required that now the name for this service points to this private endpoint IP address via an alias, and that can be handled automatically through Azure Private DNS. But now I have this private endpoint that lets me talk to the service directly, and if required, I could now go ahead and turn off the public endpoint. So now I would only communicate to it by the private endpoint. So that's what these are. I have these different types of service. If I looked at my storage account again for a second, we can see that. I can go back up to my networking and look at private endpoint connections. And all I do is I add it. I say I want to add a new private endpoint. I would give it a certain name. I would say the region I'm creating the private endpoint resource into. So I'm just going to do South Central. If it's storage, remember there are different types of service in storage. I have blob, files, queues. So I tell it which one. Say blob. I tell it which virtual network. I have to pick a particular subnet. And then notice it's offering, hey, I'll integrate with Azure Private DNS zones, which will create the record to point to the IP address of this. Now, as you saw, I already went ahead and created a private endpoint. We can see it created it in a particular virtual network and subnet over here. And if I was to go and look at that and look at my connected devices, we'll actually see that network interface that represents it. So now when I talk to 10.10.0.4 via the special DNS name, I still need to use the DNS name because this is probably going to be encrypted communications. So I need the certificate to match the name I'm talking to but it will resolve to that 10.10.0.4. So now when I talk to it, I'm talking to it via the private endpoint instead of the public endpoint. So those are the difference between an internet facing public endpoint and an internal IP address from my subnet IP space for a private endpoint.